today we're going to talk about your um, documentation assignment, practicum two. And in this assignment, my expectation is that you're going to do a high level person and a low level person. So you're going to have to copy out the forms twice. So you have one complete set for your high level person, and then you're going to pick a different person and assess them and do their documentation for a lower level person. And when I say lower level, I'm talking about cognition lower level. All right, so before we get started, let's just do a quick review of the types of documentation that you have to do. I know that some of you learned a lot of this in 165, but my expectation again is now you're gonna be able to do it to a greater detail and include some of the guidelines and survey requirements. So I'll be watching for that. And um, let's first just go over the parts of documentation that you're going to be doing. And then I'll go over the task. And then we'll go through some of the um, forms. And if you have any questions after looking at this video uh, or the Zoom session, you please call me and I will go over it with you personally or in a small group because I want to make sure that you can really do this. So I'm going to sign my name on your certificate. I'll make sure you can do this, OK? All right, so let's go over um, the types of documentation. So let me put this up on front of the screen. And there are the four types that we have to do. The first one down here is your initial activity assessment. I have put a form in there um, of a very person-centered form that you could use, although your company will have you use their form. The one that I have and, and out of our book is much better, I believe, and gets to the person-centered questions. All right, the next thing that we have to do is the MDS. And you do not have to fill out both sections. Just fill out section F, which is our section. And um, I think that's F500. If you want to do um, F400, you may. But I am really looking for section F and our section in activities. Then the next thing that you're going to fill out for both of these people is a cat and a caw. So figure out some way to make a problem for them so that you can write to that problem. OK. And uh, let's see. So the cat is a series of questions that you go through. And the caw is how you're going to answer or change the care plan. Actually, it's the same form. The computer goes from one into the other. But you cannot finish, the, you have to finish the cat in order to get to the car. And then you're going to write a care plan for me. We're not going to do a, a care conference, but you'll write a care plan. And then I um, will have you write a quarter report because I want to make sure that you can do that. So when you write your care plan, I have forms for you to fill out. And it's either going to be um, the standard form that you learned in 165 which is the resident will do this and this within a certain amount of time. So it's going to have a subject, a verb, uh, an action verb, a direct object, and a measurement of time. So you'll write one like that. But for your person who is lower level, I'm going to have you write an eye care plan. And I'll explain the difference between a regular care plan that you could nest within somebody else's care plan another, um, within another discipline or that you would just write separately as the activity care plan if you chose. And then the other kind is an eye care plan. A lot of the buildings are going to eye care plan, so I want to make sure you know how to do those. So when we pull up that form, I will talk about that. And then finally, you're going to pull out a blank sheet of paper. I think this is the only form that I haven't provided for you. And you're going to fill out a blank sheet of paper. And in your word processing, you're going to write me a quarterly report. In that quarterly report, you'll answer, what did they do? How did they do it? Are they reaching their goals? And what special approaches do you use for them? So that's going to be at least 500 words. And remember, it is going to be descriptive. You're going to make it descriptive of the last 90 days of their function. So again, I'm asking you, since you cannot go into a building, I'm asking you to do a, bit, a little bit of creative writing. OK? All right. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is let's actually put up these forms and show you how to do them. And most of the forms, most of the forms uh, are in your 
in, in the computer and they'll say, uh, type your text here, type your text here. There is one form, the um, attendance form does not have that in there and neither does the one-on-one uh, -on -one forms. So as you go through that, I hope that they have set it up so you can type right on those forms. If not, make a copy of it and you can either handwrite it in and scan it and send it to me um, or on the one-on-one uh, -on -one forms, it, you may also do the same thing, scan it, write it in, um, or, uh, or copy it into your Word Perfect, uh, your Word section, your Word documentation, and type it out. Uh, so let me hold that and go. This is a new way that we've set it up, and I want to make sure that it doesn't cause stress for you guys, that you can do it. And if there's a problem, let me know right away so I can either call IT and they can fix it, or I can I say, okay, go ahead, scan it in, and I'll accept it written. Okay? All right. So the first form that you're going to be doing is the person-centered care form. Let me get that up for you. And you should be able just to mark in each box. And the questions that are on here are good questions because they're leading questions to about what um, is the uh, the object that we want to get want want to get them to. Is it uh, including their their likes, their interests, their values? And that's better than just reading a, a direct checkoff list for them. So use this form and fill it out. If you had any extra notations, make them and send them in um, because that's how you would be taking, starting some of your contact notes and those are important. I don't think there should be any question about this. This is a fairly simple form to fill out. And let's see if there's anything special I want you to do. Find your name at the bottom or at the top someplace so I know it's from you. Oh no, never mind. It'll be it'll be in your file. But that covers everything. Once in a while, you want might want to ask a special question about what their preferences are, or what do they feel uncomfortable doing, or sometimes to get to person-centered care, ask them what their favorite job was. That's always a good thing to do. So this should be helpful, and I'll get you away from that the standard corporate checklist that they have you fill out which doesn't really get us to the person-centered information that we want. Okay? So on down here where it has a leisure preference, you may have to fill out a second page. I think it might let you type into this, but if not, you may have to add a page and write in your comments and write them in as, as contact notes, okay? The second part of that form is this one, and um, put that back. You probably won't have to write extra, extra um, information in here simply because it is in here already. And um, so you want to write what they like to do, what some of their concerns are, and it should help you print it all out. And then it'll give you um, an option down here, activity interest to write three, three or four of those things. And if you have any special concerns about how they're going to get down to activity, you want to make some notes in here so that you have this information and you'll be able to use it when you need it. Okay. And let's go. All right. Sorry for that change. That shouldn't bother us too much. <coughs> So that pretty much covers your assessment. You want to find out what their cognitive level is, what their physical abilities are, to use their hands and their legs and their eyes and their ears, and um, what, what things do they like to do. Um, try to find out what some of their concerns are, what they're a little fearful of. And by asking those questions, you'll get to know them a lot more personally. And by all means, ask them what is important to them. And we will always get different answers to that. 
I, and I know I've used this example before. I asked the same question. What do you like to play? For, what do you want? How do you want to watch your football? One guy told me, I don't want to watch it on television. I want to go to my, my, my box down at the stadium. And another person, oh, I want to watch it with just my grandkids and we have ice cream. Another guy said, oh, I want to watch football with everybody else. Can we have beer and, and uh, pizza with it? Can we, can we do it in a big group down in the lobby? So people have different ways and that's their personal preferences, their person-centered care. We need to try to honor them. Okay, moving on then, we're right up to MDS. And this is the form that you'll be using for the MDS. They put in a nice clean form for us. And this is the questions that we sometimes ask to have to ask because the nursing doesn't have, department has time to do that. And you can mark that in there if you want. So like the first question is, do you like to pick out your own clothes? And you're gonna say, yes, it's important. It's very important, somewhat important, not important at all, or no, I can't do it. So the answers are right here that you wanna put in here. I believe that if you wanted to write a comment underneath here, you can type it in. Uh, we'll see how new, this new system works. But like if they, oh no, they might've put, say something like, oh, I don't have to pick out my own clothes. My wife picks it out from me all the time. You know, so you might be able to write that comment in there. And I hope that you can, because that's how you can do it on the real computer form. So those are the nursing questions. And then down here, we have questions directly related to activities. And the first one I think is, what do you like to read? And you'll see if it's important, not important, or they can't do it. And if they can't do it, you wanna make a little note about what do they need to do it? Do they need reading glasses? Do they need more light, light in their room? And go down through all the questions and answer the question, just like you did in 165. For those of you who had a waiver, uh, and if you have any any questions about how to do this, you let me know, and we'll do. A, I'll do a personal one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you, a chat with you on the phone, phone, so that you can get this done and not stress out about it. Okay. All right. So then the next question down here is: Is it important to you listen to music? Is it important to you be around the animals? Is it important to you for you to do groups with other people? Is it important to you go to a religious group? So answer all those questions on whether it's important to them, somewhat important, not important at all. And remember that if we get three or more not important at all, or they don't want to do any of these things, you're definitely going to trigger. So try to make one of these areas trigger so that you write your call to it. Okay, and that'll, that'll make it a lot easier to, to do the next part of the assignment. All right. Uh, then the final question down here is they're going to ask you who filled this out. Was it the resident? Was it a family member? Or did you have to ask staff? Or were they not able to do it? Well, in this assignment, let's make them able to do it, okay? And the only time that you would mark they're not able to do it is because they're totally comatose. And that isn't going to complete your assignment for you. So, all right. Any questions on this, give me a call and we'll take care of them. This is fairly easy to do it basically. It's an extension of the interview. When you did that interview, it was like a uh, general conversation. When you do the MDS, it is more like a definitive interview and you have to get a definitive answer. You also uh, in 165 and also in your book have a lot of the um, guidelines for this. So do not hesitate to look in the back of your appendix, they actually fill one of these out for you so that you can see how it's done in your um, long-term care book. Okay, that pretty much covers that one. So what that leads you then into is the first part of the cat and the car. Now, I want to repeat that this is important. This cat and the car Remember, a person is not black and white. We are multiple colors and multiple colors of gray. And so on your first question over here, what did you find out about them? Do they like to do solitary things? Do they like to do things in group? Do they like to do things with their family, out of the community, inside the community? All these things I listed. And you know what? Sometimes a person is more than just one thing. Yeah, they like to be in groups. And no, they don't want to do it with their family, but they like to do it with the community. So you're going to mark multiple things here. Even though it does sound like it's a little bit contradictory, 
you're going to mark multiple things. And what you're going to do then is over here, you're going to clarify that. And you're going to say, see activity assessment on this date regarding interest with family. Or see contact note on this date regarding solitary activities. Because maybe I went back and I interviewed them another time and got more information about them. So I'm going to note where it is. So over here, they're asking, what documentation did you put this in? Was it in the assessment? Was it in your contact note? Was it in the MDS? Did you make a note about it in your care plan? Tell them where you found this information and send them just to that area and the date that you did it and a little note about what it was. So enjoys doing independent activities. See contact note about desire to play chess or how they want to watch a football game, whatever it is. So it's going to be like a short little sentence, but it's going to be a direction that you can send the surveyor to so they can get it. They can get wh where you're going with this. So that, that's going to be required of all these sections over here. So the next section is current pursuits. And um, the first one it says is activity identifies leaders interest of this resident. So if you mark that, put that down and say where it was. Was it in the activity assessment? And the date. Um, are they now on the second one here, it gets the government is trying just to make you think holistically. So they give you an option of, of answering this for, for both both ways, but then you need to tell them where to go and where to find it. So the second one is self-directed or done with others or planned by others. So if any of those apply, mark it. Maybe two of those apply. And then tell them where you, where, where you, where, why you mark that and why it is in the, um, uh, and where it is. So yeah, I, I marked this in my activity assessment and it's regarding their desire to do things with, with other people. Okay, and the date. All right, so the rest of those are self-explanatory. You read them and, and you mark them in. Sometimes you don't have to mark it, it doesn't apply. So don't worry about it, but you have to mark something in each box to show that you did the work. Because remember, if it's not documented, it's not done. And that's the way the surveyors look at it. So I want you to be careful not get caught on that. All right, the next page. On this one, they're talking about health issues up here. Now, this is great because with this new system, we can go and find out what everybody else said. So like if I were to look at this one over here that says cognitive deficiencies. Now they were in my group. I didn't see any cognitive deficiencies. They could sequence and they could do this and they're, they're quite fine. But if I wanted to find out what somebody else thought, I would go to these numbers over here. And these numbers over here are C500 and C700. And there's a B7 down here. So these are different sections of the MDS. And I can now go to C700 and see what the social service said about this person. And maybe they were being really resistive with the social service person because they were afraid they were gonna keep them in the building. So they didn't wanna answer. And so they weren't, co they weren't cooperating and they couldn't complete their sentences or they refused to repeat their sentences. And so they had a different interview where my interview was fine. They were cognitive, they completed skills. So that's my opinion. That's what I'm gonna mark in. Is I have to mark in what I see, but I can go back and check and see what other people had. And people do change. If you interview them during uh, one part of the day, they may be very cognitive. By the end of the day, they're too tired and they're not. So sometimes we have to go in at different hours to get a clear picture of what this person is like. And our pictures may not always agree with the different departments. So please always mark in what you see because we don't want to label these people falsely. So that's where you would find that. You'd go to that letter and the number, just like they would go to our section and we have an F400 and we have an, an F500, okay? So that'll explain that and will help you find out how they're feeling or how they're dealing with other departments. 
Now, sometimes I don't really have anything to mark on this. So I'll put NA, not applicable, or I'll put C, C um, diagnosis, or C diagnosis about this, this, or the other thing. And then I'll put the date in. But most of the time, you're going to mark at least one thing on, the, on there that, that will be applicable to the accident department. OK, getting down here to the environmental section, down here at the environmental section, we want to make sure that we are very careful about how we mark this one because we can be getting people into trouble. So let's just read through these and give you a clear understanding of how this should be marked up. So the first one is physical barriers, preventing the resident from getting access to the space. All right, that would be a big problem if I mark that. So if I see something wrong in a room, like the aides are leaving out the wheelchairs unfolded and the resident in the second bed can't get over to the bathroom. So that's a barrier. We have to remind the aides to fold up the wheelchairs and keep the rooms neat so that they can move around in their room. So I don't really wanna mark that. If I see it, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to that people, to the people on that floor and the people that I see that happening on that shift, and I'm gonna remind them that this is a violation of the guidelines and that we have to keep their wheelchairs folded up next to their bed so they can get in them and use them, but they can't leave them out in the, in the pathway where another resident needs to, to walk by. Or if I were to see uh, uh, something that needed to be fixed in the building, like uh, uh, a strip on the floor has come up and it's catching on the wheelchairs. Well, instead of marking it down here and complaining about it and not letting anybody know, I'm gonna be a friend to my team and I'm gonna say, hey, John in maintenance, down in room 402, the strip is coming up and the wheelchairs are getting caught on it. Can you put down that strip? Can you make it safer? That would be more helpful. Now, if it doesn't happen after a certain amount of time, whether it's the aides or the maintenance man, then I'm going to take it to the administrator because we've got to get this fixed. And, or, or they may say to me, oh, I can't fix that until tomorrow. Or at the end of this week, I'll, I'll have the stripping in. I ordered some new stuff. Okay. All right. That's all understandable stuff. So I'm not going to trigger anybody um, because that happened. Okay. Uh, okay. So you understand how to do this part and like I said, you don't want to mark that, but you want to go tell people, unless it's not happening, then you're going to mark it and tell the administrator, this is not happening in our building and we need to fix it. And this time I've asked everybody to do it. I really want to make you aware of it. And if I don't see that they're doing it, I really am obligated as an abuse thing to, to note it, okay? So make sure you are a team player first. And then if you have to, get to be an aggressive team player, you'll get some attention when you bring it to the, the administrator. He will not want that to be in his building like that. Okay, that takes care of that form. And moving on to the last page of the CA, the care area triggers. We have to fill out of this section up here is do they have anything special that they can do? Oh, and boy, if you find somebody who knows how to do computers and they can teach other people how to do emails, set up a group for them to do that. Okay, or if they can play chess or they have any special skill that they want to share and you want to use them in a group, this is a good place to put it because it makes them important. And that's really important. We want to raise their self-esteem so that they feel important. All right, the next one down here is, oh, sometimes you have to mark this one. And that's just because they've been in the building for like 14 or more days and they've had a change. And this one says, resident is new to the facility or has been in the long care uh, enough to become bored with the status quo or with the current activity. So on that one, you know, you can mark it for either, either reason. And if that's the case, you've got to go over here and mark uh, they are new to the building and need some adjustment time. See contact notes or see MDS or, or wherever you wrote that down and then put the date on. Or maybe it's the third or fourth quarter and they become bored with the activity. And they have told you in another, a separate interview and you wrote down a contact note. 
uh, Jane no longer wishes to go to group uh, sing, but wants to enjoy music in her room and listen to classical music by herself. So that's a change that, I, that she's had, and I'm going to mark it, and then I'm going to make sure that I get a care plan. Okay? Each one of these steps has a follow-up step, and that's why we have to do all this documentation, because it becomes one complete weaving. And all these things weave together so that we show a full picture of what the person is like. All right, so that takes care of that. Sometimes they have feelings of feeling unwell. So if that's the case, you mark it and you find out what's going on and then you write a care plan to fix it or you tell the rest of the team what's going on so that it can get fixed, social service and everybody. Okay. All right, the rest of those are explanatory. You just read through them and figure out where your people that you're interviewing fit into those. And now that has moved us on to the car. So in the car here, there are basically three things that you have to do. The first one is take that problem and rewrite it. So let's use the example. Uh, resident along it comes, wants to come down to group sing, uh, has shown a preference for having classical music in her room. Okay. Well, we can fix that problem. And then uh, down here, it might say, uh, um, well, we, we, we might put in there related to a uh, new healthcare condition of a broken hip. So she doesn't want to come down to all the groups either. Okay, so we'll, we'll add that in there. Okay, so right here now, it's going to ask you to do three simple things. It's made figuring out what their problems are and how to solve them so easy with these new forms. So the first thing you're going to do is describe the problem. So I have the problem up here, but I'm going to convince to turn it down here and resident expressing the desire to have classical music. Okay. Cause and contributing factors. Well, she told me she did not want to be down there and sing all those those old folk songs anymore. She wants she wants better music and she doesn't want to hear old Susanna anymore. So she's had a change in interest. So I would note in here resident has a change in, in interest in music and due to recent uh, injury of hip, no longer wants to come down to group. Okay, so I would put that in there. Next, we want to write in. So those were the cause and the contributing factors. Next thing is the risk factors related to the problem. So now I just need to write one more sentence down here. I've written the first two sentences, or first four sentences here. And I'm going to put risk factor. Resident may self-isolate and become depressed if she does not have classical music and wishes to have it in the room. We'll follow up with her to make sure she is not getting lonely while she's enjoying her music in the room. So in other words, in about three weeks, she might come to me and say, hey, you know what? I really like this classical music, but I want to listen to it with somebody who else who likes classical music. Can they come to my room and listen to it with me? And that's a real probability it'll happen. So I want to make sure. Resident has expressed a preference for new kind of music. We'll provide. We'll check back to make sure she's not depressed or lonely while enjoying this new group. Got it? Keep it simple, one or two sentences. Okay, so the next thing over here is going to ask me, am I going to change the care plan? And that's going to be yes for this problem. And now over here, document the reason you're going to be changing the care plan. So I don't write the care plan here. I write the reasons I'm going to be changing the care plan. Care plan will be changed to accommodate new interests of resident for classical music and desire to have it in a quieter environment. May check later to see if she's lonely doing this or wants other people in the room with her. Simple, keep it simple. So I'm telling why I'm changing the care plan, why this had to be done. All right, so don't make a big deal of it. You just keep it simple sentences. There's just the facts, you know, just the facts. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to write a care plan for that. 
And on the top of this form, I had the regular care plans that I taught you to write in 165. And they were very simple. You identified a problem, and then you wrote the care plan goal. And when you wrote that goal, you wrote it in the formula, which is subject, action verb, direct object, and measurement of time. So for our resident here who no longer wants to come down to group and listen to music, resident will listen to classical music in room three times a week for the next 90 days. Now, over here, my approaches are going to be, I'm going to put in here, will, oops, I'm sorry, I'm putting the wrong. I'm going to put in here, resident, will provide resident with classical music. We'll check back, make sure equipment is working in room. We'll check back to see if resident is lonely and would like to listen with classical music with other people. In which case then I'm going to go back when she, sa when she says that and change the care plan and say resident will listen to classical music alone or with others in a small group two to three times a week for the next 90 days. And so I'm going to accommodate and also preempt any pre coming up problems that I might have. So that's how you will write the problems. You're going to have, you're going to have, what was the problem? You're going to write the goal and you're going to write the approaches. And hmm, I would like to see maybe three, three, three goals that you have, but make sure that, so you have two goals that are written to the assessment that you did and the interest that they have. And then you'll have one goal that will be written to the, the, the problem that you found in your cat in the car, okay? So I'll be looking for three. Now down here, this is a slightly different form. This is what's called the eye care plan. And in this, you're going to write what their interests are or what their problems are and how you're going to help them solve them. And you always write this in the first person. So. I enjoy classical music, but no longer want to be in a group. I want to be by myself and listen to what I want to listen. My favorite music that I want to listen to is this, this, and this. I plan or would like to listen to classical music three times a week, and particularly on a Sunday afternoon after church. So that's very descriptive what's going on here. And it's going to tell them us what they, what they want. And you might want to do another one. So uh, you, have, you can put in one for their social history, their social concerns, their recreation and quality. So that one would go under the recreation quality. And then I might have one up here, uh, social concern. Um, uh, resident state she prefers resident I prefer to listen to classical music alone, but once in a while I like to go to a concert. And if that's not possible, I'd like to uh, have some people come down to the room, serve tea and listen to it in my room or in the private dining room. And I'd like to do that once a month. So you see the difference between these two care plans? One is directly uh, written for their care plan. And this one, usually, we're going to do for people who are cognitively lower because they can't express what they want. And they can't, we can't really confirm that they'll do it three times a week because of their cognition. But if we write in there, I would like to listen to classical music or I would like to watch football with my grandsons, the college games, in my room that will express what they want to do. And it's in a narrative form, so it's very easy. But here again, I wanna make sure that you know, write it like they're going to do it, write it how they want it done and where they want it done, because that shows all their preferences. Okay, so that's not really too hard. And there are examples in the book. Uh, they gave an example of a lady by the name of Mary and it's an excellent example. So read that through and that will give you a good idea of where they're going with this. Okay? All right. The next thing that we're going to do
and I'm making you do this just because it's gonna happen to you. And your computer has a really good um, fill that when you're an activity director and you have to mark in attendance sheets, you do the whole month. Everybody has their own sheet. So every month you're filling out a, a new form or the computer rolls it up to a new form and you'll list the activities or it may be pre-listed out for you. And then you mark down the days that they did it. And sometimes you can have it real simple, like they were active or they were passive during it. Other people put in, in uh, different things up here. And they may put, put E for use their eyes or uh, S, sensory stem, or um, uh, very active. And they might have a double A for, for doing all the, or they might have an A1, let's put A1 for being very active throughout the whole group. And you may have AP, active part of the time. So you can make up different codes for yourself. And I think there might be some more examples in, in your book or in 165, in the 165 book has more examples. So that's the normal way that you fill this out. When you have it on the computer though, let me tell you this, you can go over to custom and you can make it go up so that the aides who pass out books can now, it goes in the PPP and the aides can say, oh, these are the activities they like. I should pass out a book or I should give them a movie or I should mark that they watched that movie while I was, while I walked into their room. So um, the computer system is very helpful, but I know not everybody is on total computer system, uh, especially if you're in a prestige building, you may not be on, or some of the marquee mill buildings are not on total uh, point, point click and care uh, computer system. Some of them are on Citrix and they don't have this in it, but most of them do now. But if not, you have to make out your own form and put it in there. And let me just show you this if I simply can have it pulled up here. There are times when you can take your computer, excuse me, your calendar, and reduce it down. Let's see if I have a sample of that in here that I can find for a real quick. I don't find it in the next sec section here, at least. No. Okay, oh, here it is. So what you can do then is if they don't have that, here's a very simple form to use for uh, doing your attendance. So what you're gonna do is reduce your calendar so you, you put it all on one page. And then you're going to code it on here that um, if you mark it in uh, red, they were active. If you, oh, excuse me, if you mark it in green, they were active. If you mark it in red, they refused. And if you mark it in yellow, uh, they did partial participation. And so you make a code for yourself. And then you just highlight all the things that they came to. And then down at the bottom here, you can write in any additional comments on how they perform. So you might look at your whole calendar at the end of the month and say, hey, they did really good in their bingo uh, games uh, for the first half of the month. And then they seem to be missing, uh, they're missing quite a few of their numbers. And there may be a decline in vision or hearing that needs to be checked into. Checked into. So you can make all kinds of comments down here about how they're performing. And that's really going to help you write out that quarterly report. I kind of like this form, but I will say the ones in the computer are very easy and quick to do. And you can do, you can chart the whole building at once instead of turning everybody's page because the computer flips through it. So that's something for you to think about. You take your calendar, you reduce it down to about 25% of the size. So this is a really tiny, but then you just go in here and mark with a highlighter what color and how they performed. And then you can look at that and make your assessments at the end of the month. Because when you have three of these, what happens? Yeah, you got to write that quarterly report because you had to do it for three months. And it's hard to remember this stuff. So you want to do that. All right. So that'll, that'll help you out a little bit. And um, then the final thing that we have to do here. Oh, we have two more things we have to do. Sorry. The final thing that you would do. 
Now, sometimes the, uh, um, you can make attendance sheets for all terms people, um, or you can do a one-on-one -on -one sheet, because lots of times you're gonna be doing one-on-ones with them. Now, you're gonna use this one-on-one -on -one sheet. I'm gonna hide behind here for a minute. You're gonna use this one-on-one -on -one sheet for, for in two ways. One, you may have somebody who doesn't wanna come down to groups, and you'll go around and visit them to pass them out stuff or, or bring them the activity card, activity card. And um, then you're going to make a note on who you visited and how they did or how long they extended the conversation with you. So you have a lot of cues up here. And this one is fairly easy to fill out. And the same thing will happen. So it's odd to say that you're going to use this for a high level person. You're also going to use it for a very low level person. But there are good one-on-one -on -one contact notes that you can make so that you get a good picture of what's going on with these folks. So let's go through this for just a minute. So you have listed up here um, the activity code. So that's over here. And were they oral with you? Um, were they aware? Uh, did they take a, a pet visit? Are they doing a, uh, um, an art project or a craft project? Did they have any creative expression? Did they do any exercises? Maybe they're doing exercises in the room. You want to find out what they want or whether they need extra weights or something. So you're going to mark down what did it, the date you'll put here, the length of the visit you're going to put here, where it's five minute, 10 minute, seven minute, uh, 20 minute visit. Um, then you're going to put the activity code. So you're going to put a number in here. You may actually write out what they what it was, conversation, visit, chat, visit, something like that. And you've got music and religion, so you mark all these different uh, things up here. And then you're going to mark in who did it. It may not be you doing it. It may be one of your assistants. You want them to mark down their initials so you know who did this one-on-one -on -one visit. And then you're going to write any responses. They wanted more arts and crafts and they wanted the craft to be more difficult. Or they wanted a, a new jigsaw puzzle and they needed to be easier. Um, they wanted different music. So whatever you need to mark in here. Or they did exercises, but they said that they tire out too, too quickly and they don't complete all their exercises now. So whatever is happening, we want to record so that we can tell somebody, hey, PTOT, they need a little more help. They need can I get heavier, lesser weights for them? They're complaining that it's causing too much pain or whatever. So these are good informative sheets. To, and it's proof that we can take to the OT, the PET, to the nurse and say, hey, this is happening. And I recorded it three times. So this way we can make people aware of how important your job is and you're documenting it so that people, is aware, people are aware of behaviors or they would say, hey, didn't want to, did not accept a visit three times in a row. Well, something's going on. Are they physically not feeling well? Are they getting depressed? Or maybe they just don't like you. We've got to figure that out, okay? Because we've got to be able to change that and go to the rest of the team and get help to change it. And then the final thing that you're going to do is you're going to write a quarterly report. And you're going to put that in. You get a blank sheet of paper and you put it in your processing, your, your Microsoft Word. You're going to type it in and you're gonna add it to the um, um, attendance book. Now, I realize this seems like a big assignment because you're doing it for two people, but you, the first one is usually pretty easy to do because they'll give you a lot of things. Now, the one who has cognitive difficulties, they still like doing some of these things, but they're gonna need more help how to do them. They're gonna to have to be cued when to come to group or you are gonna to have to do more setups with them. So this will cue you on how to work with your people. And that's real important. So um, I want you to understand your documentation is just not busy work. It's the way that you communicate with the resident, with the family members, and with the rest of your team so we can bring in the quality of the life that they are capable of doing and what they would enjoy. And we have to work as a team on this. But a lot of times in activities, we can kind of see, oh, they're going to get bored doing that by themselves. I better include them in a, in a group if they want. I'm going to offer that to them. Or, gee, I see they're reading, but they're not reading as much. 
I wonder if they've had a change in their vision. Or they were just maybe too shy to tell somebody that the reading light above them burned out and they didn't want to trouble anybody to get a new light. So you are a very important person as far as bringing quality of life to these people because you're going to know them better than anybody else in that building. And that sounds awful for me to say, but it's true because they come to us and they're not afraid of us because we're not sticking them with needles and stuff like that. We're friendly. We're nice. We're bringing them happy things right? Okay. So they're going to trust you with a lot of their information. So make sure that you can communicate it well. Let me jump back and say one more thing, just so that you're aware about this. Now you may have done a lot of things and done all your interviews, but sure as shooting, when the resident gets interviewed by social service, they're going to say, I don't do any activities around here. I don't like those groups. I don't go to any of those groups. I don't do anything. And now the social service person is going to have to mark that as, oh, they don't do anything. And that's okay. Don't freak out about that. All that means is she had to put down the answer that she saw. And you have all your documentation already in line saying, all the things you're bringing to the room, all the times you go to visit, all the times you invite them, all the times that they go out on the bus with you, even though it's not a group, they are doing things cognitively, physically, and socially. Now, they're just not doing them in a group with all those old, old people because they don't want to feel like they're staying here and that they're going to be stuck here for years. And this is usually your, your skilled people who are going to be there for 21 days. But once in a while, people say, I don't do those groups and I want my family members to move me out of here and I'll just complain and complain. And they will complain, hoping that the family members will move them out. And that may not physically be possible at all because family members can't take care of them at home. So just be aware of that. This is nothing different than human nature that we all experience, but know that if you document that you did do an assessment with them, that you did offer groups to them, and that you did make a care plan for them, and these are the things that they do in the room or the things that they have available to do should they choose to do them, then you're in the clear. You've done your job, and you'll continue to do your job no matter whether you get a lot of refusals. Once in a while, you do need to mark down refusals on the attendance sheet because that's going to be a pattern for what they, uh, for if they've had some changes. Why are they not coming to the bingo games? Oh, we may find out they don't want to sit next to John anymore because he, he talks too loud or something. So we'll find out these funny little things that happen. Not, not funny little things, but, you know, irritating little things that happen in life that make people change. And we want to be on top of that. And I know as good future activity directors, you're going to be great at this. And if you have questions or concerns about this, then give me a call and I'm going to help you personally because I want you to get this assignment in. Now, this assignment comes in on the fifth week, which means you only have like two weeks after that to finish this assignment and get it in. So remember, on the fourth week, you had your calendar thing to do, and that was a heavy week. And then on your fifth week, I put in the documentation. So I'm getting all the hard stuff done in the middle of this class so that you're aware of it and don't leave it to the end and you don't freak out in last week trying to do everything. So look at those. If you have problems, give me a call. I'm lonely. I will be happy to talk to you. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. And please tell me if you have any problems or questions about this or if you have any technical problems with the computer when you do it. So I hope that you will open it up, look at it, do it, be able to whiz right through it. And if, you're, if you can't, call me. All right, that's it for tonight or this afternoon. And I will be looking for your assignments. Bye now.